Hi guys, Berry Babe here. Well, I was up point one today at 12.30 when I finally hauled out of bed for the last time. I'm retired and I don't fall asleep till one or two in the morning and I'm up every couple hours in the night with my old lady bladder. So yeah, sometimes I'm in bed at 12.30. Um, when I woke up at seven, it was 165.2, which was up from 163.5. I don't know. I'm not sure my numbers. I wrote them down, but I'm looking at it. It's like, I don't know. But today, so when I weighed the, the next time, when I got up at nine-ish and weighed, <laughs> I'd lowered some. And then I was almost back to where I was before. So 1.36 is what I'm counting, so that's 0.1 up. So I'm at 14.1 in 25 VLCDs, I'm losing ground. And I wondered about, because I didn't overindulge yesterday, as far as I knew, I did have a one bar, and I'm wondering if, okay, maybe that's not gonna work for me. But um, what I think it might be is that I started on the treadmill um, two days ago, so today was the third day. And I also started, um, we have an Airdyne bike that's got the handles that work independently. So I've been, um, I do my 30 minutes on the treadmill and I do it to music so it's pacing at 2.6 and I'm just kind of going along. I can't walk on it without the music. Um, and so I have to check because my daughter's inclining and twice I've gotten on and it's been at half an incline. Now, once my legs get more used to being on and I get some stamina and I'm off the HCG, um, every few weeks I will increase the incline. And that'll keep me, then I'll be able to do the same pace, the same songs, but it will be an increase because I don't want to level out with that. And the Airdyne bike, we have bicycles and I like to ride. And when we go to Florida, we take the bikes but I have not had the legs for it, so I'm trying to get my legs built up. And then I use, I, I use the things independently to push. I just I push and then I pull, and then I turn around this way and I push and I pull. So I'm, I can feel it. I'm trying to get rid of that spare tire around here. At least I want to tighten up what's underneath so I can determine how much fat there is. So um, yesterday my legs were sore and felt congested. But I, uh, they're not holding any fluid. So, you know, they say that perhaps when you start exercising, um, the fat may leave, but it will fill with fluid. And so that's very possible what happened. My hands felt a little bit stiff, but not really. I wasn't seeing any real huge signs of being bloated. So it's very possible that it's intermuscular. So I'm trying to be extra stringent today and hoping that um, it goes down tomorrow. Another thing is I've been eating later in the evening because we didn't get home and um, I had half an apple before I went to bed. Now I've had an RNY with the DS afterwards, but I still have the RNY pouch. And oh, okay, gorgeous, gorgeous Honeycrisp Rainier apples. And half, I ate half. I have a feeling that just sat in my pouch. So when I woke up this morning at seven, I probably still had apple going through my system. The um, the new scale, I got not a nice surprise today. On my phone, I get on the little one and I take my my reporting weight, but then I get on the other one to the, the big new fancy one to get all my stats. And I've decided that once I get to goal, then I'll switch over to the new scale because the the space between the two readings is not consistent enough for me to, to deal with. So I thought, just let me do the little one because I can get on the little one through the day. I can't get on the other one because every time you get on, well, I guess I wouldn't have, it, I guess I could get on the other one, but it pairs with my phone. So if I turned the Bluetooth off, Bluetooth off, it wouldn't pair. But there was a message, you have gained blah, blah, blah since your last weigh-in. Well, thank you very much. <clears throat> I did weigh again at 1230, and I got to see 162 something. So it's like, okay, okay. 
And I just remember back to the couple of times I've been at 161 and then I started cheating. I'm like, oh. You know, and I know my mindset was, well, I'm at 161, I'm getting close to gold so I can play with it now. And I can't. I can't play with it. I can't play with it. I, I'm no good. Um, years ago, um, after my r and -Y, um, I had lost down, I was 285 when I had the r and -Y, and um, I got down to 197 for about three minutes. I went to a bachelor party, and I ate one tortilla chip, and then I ate another, and another, and I think the night ended with me eating a piece of penis cake. <laughs> And then it was all over. I didn't see 200 again for years. In fact, I didn't really, I couldn't really break 200 till I had my tummy tuck. I had my tummy tuck at 210. He took off 10 and a half pounds of skin, and after that, I felt thinner, and so I was able to get on with it. Um, what I'm finding now is that having my breasts lifted, I didn't have any implants. I just had the excess skin removed. I'm getting that same liberated feeling. I really thought, I, I was real concerned about it because I've had several surgeries and every time you go under surgery you run the risk of, you know, or coming out like a vegetable. And um, so did I, I, I really felt that when I had, I had my legs and my arms done, and of course my tummy tuck, I really felt like that was reconstruction for mental health. I mean, I, I just, I get joy out of those parts now, whereas before they disgusted me. And so I was kind of feeling like, yeah, my breasts, you know, hang to here. They kind of disgust me, but is this vanity? And my youngest said, you know what? You're just trying to put yourself back to what you would have had if you hadn't been fat, which is true. Although I suppose at 62, almost 63, the breasts are better than they would have been if I'd been thin all along at 60. So, um... So I am seeing general trend down with the fat and up with the muscle. You know, when you get on, it goes, I'm, I've been at 39% fat, 39.6, 39.2, 39.4. Well, I'm starting to see 38s. It's still jumping around, but I'm starting to see 38s. And on the muscle, I don't remember what my number was, but that's come up one digit too. So I, I did a graph. I didn't use Excel. I'm not that good. Um, just in Word, I did a, a graph, and every day I go in and I put them in it so I can see trends. So I want the trend to be that the fat is lowering and the muscles increasing. Because um, I'm, I'm really afraid when I go to the plastic surgeon, he's going to be upset. If I make it to my goal, which is 148, I think he's going to be upset. I think he's going to think I'm too thin. And probably I'm screwing up all the work he did. The other thing is that um, one thing I was, um, Lindsay Liu uh, has had an RNY, and this is for my weight loss surgery side, guys. Um, and something she said resonated with me that, you know, I, ha I still have a pouch. I was revised to a DS, which gives me malabsorption, but. Um, my bariatric nurse said when they looked at redoing the stomach, it was just too much. So they just left it. And I think I got the best of both because I don't have GERD. I still have restriction, um, but yet I have the malabsorption. So to me, I, I'm not displeased. The thing is, after ha being banded in 95, and it was the fabric non-removable band, so it wasn't lap band, and it was open, all three of my things have been open, so I know about the, the oh my God, up your muscles. Um, so I have, I, when I was at that original seminar in 95 for the band, they said you can never eat ice cream again. Well, yeah, right. Ice cream goes down really well. Here comes food porn again. Sorry, M&Ms go down really well. Cheetos go down really well. It's easy to eat around the surgery. And those of you that have put on some weight after you've had your procedures know exactly that. 
There are things to eat that don't go down. I can't do a lot of chicken breast. Ribs, three bites, and if I eat anything on top of it, I'm losing it. Um, but there are times when I can eat and eat and eat and I don't get full. But the more I'm conservative with what I'm eating, the better my restriction seems to be. I think that stomach tends to do this. Well, I, I'm, I've been upping my supplements. I've, I have had adrenal issues self-diagnosed. And so I've added biotin and some other things. And now I've added these fiber capsules. <laughs> well, you have fiber capsules and then you drink. And then they, you know. And um, there is a phenomenon when you have a pouch that I have experienced ever since my first surgery. That your pouch is full. You can't put anything more in it. And I don't really feel it till it's bumping up against my esophagus. And I just, if I eat any more, I'm going to get, I'm going to lose it. And, um, but my brain is saying, oh, but it's lunchtime. Or, oh, but you haven't had your, mm, yet. Or, I just want it. I'm an emotional eater. I'm a stress eater. I'm a eat for fun. I'm a, I eat crap. I don't like veggies. You know, it's like I have awful, awful habits. That's why I go up and down and up and down and up and down because I can't put the crap down. But right this minute, I guess I put the crap down. Um, but, you know, that head hunger is real. And, and it's a real um, dichotomy when I can't hold any more, but my body, my brain is screaming, feed me. You know, my mouth is like, wants it. I must have been stuck at the oral stage um, as I was developing because I just, mouth feel is a lot. So I just wanted to say, anybody who, you know, you're full and you know you're full. I don't really ever feel full unless I know my pouch is full. There are times when I'm so empty. I call it sucking air. <laughs> it just feels like it's a wind tunnel. Like there's nothing down there because, you know, the pouch empties out. And um, so when it's really empty, it just really feels like I'm sucking air. And I do um, sometimes end up with, I think, blood sugar issues. Because um, I've been in grocery stores and things where I've actually had to get a little milk and open it up and drink it because I felt like I was having a problem. So, uh, we definitely, July the 2nd, are going to Famous Dave's mm, Food Porn. They have this these onion straws, and they have cornbread, and those are two things. Now, my daughter is trying to lose weight, and she's the one that picked Famous Dave's, and last year and this year, she's been dieting, so instead of a birthday cake, she gets Famous Dave's cornbread they have it at Walmart. So we are going to Famous Dave's. So it's like, mm, okay, I can't eat very many, very much of the ribs. It's so challenging. It just fills me up. But um, I don't know how I'm going to handle that. And I'm just, I'm creeping, creeping, creeping down the goal. I just don't need it. But I don't have the heart to tell her, no, pick something else. And I don't know if I'll be able to sit there and not eat anything. I won't order extra muffins this time. Usually we trade in like coleslaw for extra muffins and they bring them like, like all. I only like the tops because they kind of get more chewy and sweeter seems like. So now I'm just rambling on and on. Um, don't think there's anything else. I've been watching a lot of vlogs, BHSers and weight loss surgery people. And um, I'm glad for the people that are doing well, and I'm feeling it for the people who aren't. So hopefully things get better for all of us, and I will check in another time. Bye.